My name is Tracy Lynch. I'm the creative director of the Nando's Design Program and also a director on Clart SA. Uh, my background was actually fine art. I studied at Stellenbosch University and then I did a postgraduate degree at Stellenbosch as well, focusing on more conceptual arts, but um, found myself in the creative industries, working in film and in magazines, and then um, luckily found interior design and have moved into the mentorship space. And now I work creatively with corporate clients. Seven years ago, we started with the Nando's design program. It didn't have a name and it didn't have a strategy. It was just an idea. And the idea evolved over the years as we recognized opportunities. And after seven years with wonderful success in the space, having created a massive market for creatives to sell their pieces into the Nando's world, um, we've also created mentorship programs and we have published books and magazines and we have a website and we run um, talent competitions we decided that our lofty vision of taking South African design to the world needed to reach other corporate clients. So last year in June, we launched Cloud SA. Cloud SA is the Nando's design team um, reaching out to find new clients so that we can grow the opportunity, so that we are able to give more opportunity to makers and designers um, whether it be local or global. So the Nando's design program wasn't a structured program at first. It was a response to recognizing opportunities um, in a business. So we started with the redesign of Nando's Central Kitchen. And as we grew, um, we recognized opportunities to mentor emerging designers, to create um, talent search competitions, to publish journals and magazines, to create showcases both locally and globally, and to create a massive market um, for designer pieces in the Nando's world, both locally and globally. We have a very lofty vision at Clout SA. We want to build South African design into a recognizable category brand. And in order to do that, we need more partners. So because of the success that we've had in the Nando's world, the team that runs the Nando's design program and the Portal to Africa have started a new business called Clout SA. And Clout SA is our opportunity to reach out to other corporate clients, other businesses, and help them align with South African creatives to recognize opportunities in other businesses so they can flourish and create marketplaces and opportunities for designers so that the industry can grow both locally and internationally. When I started working with Nando's, uh, I was very fortunate to have already been introduced to their art program. The Spear Arts Trust had already been curating a collection of art for Nando's for approximately 10 years. And I found this incredibly inspiring. Um, I knew immediately that a business that could support creators in such a profound way would have an interest to also support South African design. So part of my initial thinking and part of my initial pitch to Nando's was if you are doing what you're doing for artists, why are you not doing that for designers? So I recognized a connection between an opportunity that they had already created. The response that I had from shareholders was they were not convinced that it was possible. And my response was, we won't know until we try. Uh, I was very fortunate to be working with a client that had already built a significant relationship with South African creatives. They had been collecting art and to this day they have the biggest collection of contemporary South African art in the world and all of those pieces are housed in the Nando's restaurants, both locally and globally. And so this was a cue for me. Um, I knew that they understood the power that um, aligning with creativity would bring their business and so I challenged them to take it further. Nando's, when they first introduced the idea of, a, of an art collection to be held within the cusses, there wasn't the same kind of uptake as you would see today within the business. These kind of 
ideas take time to land within large businesses. So um, I realized that with the opportunity that we had to redesign the head office, I would really have to do something powerful in order to draw out the response from the business that would be very positive and that they would see the potential um, that working with other, as, um, other areas of, creative, of South African creatives would really add value to the business. So what was interesting in the Nando's world is they are restauranteurs, they design restaurants and because every single Nando's um, in the world is a different design, uh, interior designers are able to work with, um, with a, a series of guidelines but each Nando's is actually a completely new design. It meant that this opportunity would create a massive marketplace for South African design. And at the heart of it was expressing an authentic South African vision. So when you say, um, we're a South African business and we want to share with the world the positive around creativity in South Africa, we're gonna put a massive collection of art into the cusses. Well, then my question was, and what of the lights, the tables, the chairs, the finishes, and all the other things that are making up a casa, making up a restaurant? So um, what I did was, when I looked at how I would approach the head office, instead of just designing it as a space, I curated it, which meant that I drew in products chairs, tables, lights, desks, patterns, fabrics, from across the board um, designer makers that were already working and making and manufacturing in South Africa. So this became the biggest showcase of South African design. Uh, there are a number of warehouse spaces that were converted. So the scale of the project was quite enormous. And it meant that I could work with more than 40 designer makers to bring the spaces to life. And I absolutely spent all of the money for FF&E on South African design. And this allowed the business to see that the South African industry, when it comes to design and manufacture, were absolutely capable of meeting the demands of a really demanding project. And this really won them over. Also, for the first time I convinced them that a South African aesthetic shouldn't be manufactured by designers in studios, it should be a representation coming from the creatives on the ground, coming from the makers that live and work in South Africa. This meant that it would really be an authentic expression. So by curating and, and, and working with many, we found in the expression of Central Kitchen a, a creative experience that really spoke to being a South African creative, to understanding what it means when you say, what does is, what is South African creativity look like? It's a mishmash of craft, it's a mishmash of pattern and handmade, innovation, upcycling, all sorts of elements come into what South African design is really about. But at the heart of it is a collection of ideas from across the board, cr many creatives all across South Africa. And this meant that we had a very rich, layered expression of what it is to be living in South Africa now. And this shared a very positive message with the business. For the first time, I think they felt really proud that design from South Africa wasn't just an expression of curio, wasn't just held by sticks and pots and reeds and all the cliches. There was an energy, there was something really dy dynamic and unique happening and that needed to be captured, that expression needed to be captured um, in the Nando's restaurants globally. So it really was an amazing aha moment and that's when we recognized that we could create a marketplace for South African design within the Nando's world. So um, we invited interior designers that work on Nando's projects globally to come to Central Kitchen and their first response was really positive. Um, it was at that time that I realized the value of storytelling within a corporate environment. 
not only for the interior designers who already were won over by just a response to the the pure aesthetics and the dynamism of seeing all these pieces together, but really for all of the people invested in the business to do a walkthrough and be able to share the stories of a shanty that recycles t-shirt material and fashion material so that um, communities that have no other way of making income can shred those fabrics and turn it into balls of um, a fabric that can then be woven into lampshades by talking about the Danoon weavers outside of Cape Town that live in a community where there just is no opportunity and people like Binky Newman that have made opportunities in these communities where women weave lampshades under her guidance and can create something absolutely exceptional and a way to bring dignity to their households and put food on the table and then talking about innovators like David Cranar who is a extraordinary carpenter but an amazing innovative designer when it comes to his use of timber and how he uses technology to craft a very unique expression of what um, South African furniture pieces look like and so all of these stories brought South African design to life not only for the interior designers but also for the business and it became a wonderful proud moment where they could really say with um, confidence that what we have in South Africa is exceptional and very special and this was something that we needed to combine with the dedication to the arts program and take to the world. Um, early on in the opportunity we recognized that it would be very important to draw out new talent um, we wanted to create opportunities for young creatives to enter into the market space and make products. So our first Hot Young Designers competition was in 2016 and we launched that at Design in Darba. It was an absolutely wonderful moment to have the entries come through and at this time we realized the value of communicating to a broader public. It was very special to use to be able to use the Design in Darba platform and talk about um, the Nando's world and we were looking for innovators, we were looking for dynamic entrepreneurs, we were looking for young people that just had the will to be part of something bigger. And um, we ended with 10 wonderful finalists. And at that time, I realized it would be very important to um, create collaborations. So this was also another aha moment. We had beautiful drawings that came in, wonderful stories to talk about the products, but we didn't actually have any lights. So um, because we had already been working with the broader design community, the more established designers, I called on some of our partners that were designing restaurants um, for us in South Africa, or making furniture or had been part of the Central Kitchen project to mentor the 10 finalists so that we could create a collection of prototypes that were actual lights. And that's when we realized something really extraordinary was happening. We were creating a community. And this community had the potential to transform an industry. So from then on, we knew that this would be our approach. We would create a network and we would harness what existed in the industry, um, the, the knowledge that existed in the industry and the extraordinary generosity of designers that want to give back to create opportunity for emerging designers and creators that may not have the same access to opportunity to do great work. So this started the Nando's design program. And from the first um, 10 finalists, Tabisa and Jo was joint winner with Sam Foden. And Tabisa and Jo has gone on to become one of the most recognized young emerging designers in South Africa with um, some of her pieces in the Decorative Arts Museum in Paris. And um, she has also gone on to be one of the biggest sellers on the Nando's portal to Africa. Uh, her business has grown to such a degree that Nando's, even though we buy lots of pieces from Tabisa, we only account for 16% of her sales. And that to us is success. We have helped Tabisa on her journey 
but she is the director of her own business. And it's through her incredible energy and her unstoppable um, dedication and commitment and leaping at opportunities that she has crafted this very special business that talks to heritage, that talks to extraordinary pieces that harness amazing weavers from KwaZulu-Natal, beaders that she works with um, in the Johannesburg area. And her pieces are absolutely recognizable and she really has gone from strength to strength. She's a wonderful ambassador to design. She's been awarded many times and we know that her career will continue to flourish. So we realize that through the program and through the opportunities that we've been recognizing in the corporate space, we have amazing ability to create ambassadors that can inspire young people. And so it has a ripple effect. It's not only about the Nando's Hot Young Designers competition or the Nando's design program. It's what that says to South Africa. It's what that says to South African businesses. It says, get involved. You can make a difference, even if you start small and it seems like an overwhelming challenge to create movement in a sector which is quite small. But what we've seen is one step at a time, we notice that the ripple effect is indeed changing the status quo. And we feel very committed to draw out new talent and to make sure that the South African design industry really represents South Africa. And that means that we have to be incredibly patient and we have to find innovative ways to create sustainable opportunities for entrepreneurs. And that really is what we're about in the Nando's design program, as well as with Clout SA. If I think about the last eight years working on the Nando's design program and now with Clout SA, I recognize that really the start of this was knowing that a business that was already dedicated to a concept that was proving its worth could be convinced that by dedicating themselves in a more um, conscientious way that they could have an even bigger impact on the, the business, the Nando's business, and on an industry. So I think that that really has been a wonderful um, realization and being brave enough to challenge a corporate client. Um, it's, it's not a conventional corporate client in the sense that they did have an understanding of the value of creativity in the business, so there was a starting point. But I think as time goes on and more and more businesses are aware that they need to think differently, they need to harness different energy, and um, the, creative, the creative communities are incredibly positive. When it comes to an expression of, um, of optimism, creative communities really hold that. They're invested in a language of beauty and of transformation. And I think any business out there that isn't interested in harnessing some of that is really missing a step. I think one of the things I've learned is always being the creative at the boardroom table. We have so much to offer. And sometimes we don't speak each other's languages, but really it, are, it is our responsibility to communicate what we believe in. Um, as time goes on, I've learned how to express myself in that space. But as time goes on, corporate clients also listen better because they do recognize that having somebody who thinks differently and challenges the status quo really does bring opportunity. So I challenge you to be brave and be the creative at the boardroom table. It is a profound opportunity. Don't be intimidated by what you don't know, but be inspired by what you can deliver. And I think if we all strive to do that, we have something really extraordinary to contribute. It is already happening. We see it all around us. We just have to keep going.